It is Easter Sunday. And we are celebrating it in a different way this year. We can't pretend that the churches are filled or that you are here with me. And we can't avoid the fact that on this day, there are many people who are dying from COVID-19. And depending on the place in the world, we are indeed experiencing Easter near the peak of this pandemic. And there is this reality as well, that for the people who are very sick, and even those who are dying, they need to be alone and isolated. I'm aware of the fact that there are many, some of you in fact, who are ones who fill in, use your own phone so that the person who is sick can have a last conversation through Zoom or through messaging. And there is this truth as well. Many of you are alone. You are home alone. And I'm not talking about that movie with the boy who was accidentally left home alone at Christmas. Because many are home alone on purpose for safety and health and protection. And in fact, it is so serious, it is for some a matter of life and death. I share this with you because it's important, I believe, for us to know that Easter is celebrated this year in the midst of illness, death, fear, and this persisting anxiety. I know for some of us who, when we have to go out for an important errand to pick up essential things, we may feel our anxiety rising, and we may even wonder if the mask we're wearing is doing its job, that we have avoided touching something that would contaminate us. Touching something that in fact would expose us to this disease. And even more, we're worried that we ourselves may be carrying it unknowingly, causing someone else to be sick. So it is tempting on this Easter to make this day about forgetting all that is going on in the world. It is for this day for many of us to make the best of it, and that is good. I know that my family later today will have a Zoom gathering and I know that for you too, you are making connections with one another and with family in all different kinds of ways. And in fact, it may be that some of you may get in the car and go to someone else's home, only to stay in the street and to stay in the car and to wave. It would be tempting to use this day as a reprieve from the harsh images that we see on the screens, to have some time where we forget about what is happening in the world. But if we do, 
if we see this day as a way for us to give ourselves a break from all of this, we will indeed miss Easter and its power. For you see, the story of the resurrection begins in the dark and in the early morning. As the women are going to the tomb, they are going to a burial. They are experiencing the tragic death of someone young with so much potential. That is where Easter begins. Forty years ago, a religious religion professor at Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota, preached at the baccalaureate service. Dr. Hoffering, in his message, raised all the challenges that were facing these graduates, but at the same time, he inspired them, helping them recognize how it is that they can make a significant difference in the midst of the world and all of its challenges and brokenness. In his talk with them, in his sermon, he said, I encourage you to think of yourselves as an Easter people in a Good Friday world. And I think that's a really good way for us to think about who we are during this time of a pandemic. In his baccalaureate sermon, he also told the story about Pope John Paul II, who when he made a trip to the United States, he went to Harlem. And at that time, there was tremendous poverty and desperation with all kinds of hopelessness made known in that area. But there he was with his white robe on Thousands of people were gathered around him. And as he spoke, he said this, we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. It made quite an impression for him to be there. He could have been on Wall Street or Broadway. He could have been in a cathedral but he chose to go there to identify with the ones that are most in need. In just a few moments, you are going to hear the gospel story, and in fact, you're going to see it performed in a way that you may not have seen before. And I encourage you to pay attention to the way the story begins in a cemetery and in the dark. And also pay attention to the good news that is spoken. It is truth for those first witnesses as it is for all of us. In this story, we are encouraged to go ahead and to look for Jesus. And so on this Easter Sunday. That is what we do. Go. Jesus is ahead of you. You will meet him. Yes, you will indeed meet the risen Lord, even in our Good Friday world. Amen. Easter is coming, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. 
There is too much pain and suffering in the world today. Death has the last word. It would therefore be foolish to say that the life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. Why? Might makes right. Power is superior to compassion and despair is stronger than hope. So I refuse to believe a man can come back from the dead. Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. Resurrection is a false hope. How can you say an empty tomb changes everything? Don't you see God loves the world is a lie? Money is God, and the one who dies with the most toys wins. I will tell you what I tell my children. There is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. Many of us simply do not believe that God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. But what if the testimony of the women at the tomb was true? Then God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. Many of us simply do not believe that there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people, there is no mystery in everyday life, and there is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. I will tell you what I tell my children. The one who dies with the most toys wins and money as God is a lie. God loves the world. Don't you see? An empty tomb changes everything. How can you say resurrection is a false hope? Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. A man can come back from the dead. So I refuse to believe despair is stronger than hope. Power is superior to compassion and might makes right. Why? The life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. It would therefore be foolish to say that death has the last word. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. Easter is coming.
this Easter Sunday. It is uh, my prayer that as you are worshiping, you are experiencing the promise of the resurrection, that you discover how it is that you celebrate Easter even as we live in a Good Friday world. I want to thank those who are assisting with worship on this day. I am grateful to have Pastor Mark Vitalis Hoffman with us. He is also professor at United Lutheran Seminary. He will be presenting the gospel to us. And I thank Helen Smith who offers a musical offering uh, later in the service. We have Scott Fredericks who, as you have already heard, uh, providing leadership in our music through the organ. And we want to be sure to thank Doug West, who is the one who does um, our, all of our videos and does the editing and makes this all come together for a meaningful experience for you. And I thank our administrative assistant, Jane Lawrence, as well, who has been putting these worship services together for us. We continue our worship with the call to worship, and I invite you to respond with the words that you find in the bold print on your screen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. I thank you that you answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel for this Easter Sunday is Matthew 28, 1 to 10. On Friday afternoon, Jesus died on the cross. Some of his followers were brave enough to go to the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate and get permission to bury his body. The Jewish authorities also went to Pilate because they had remembered what Jesus had said that he would rise again after three days. And so they convinced Pilate to send a guard to secure the tomb. Now, when the Sabbath was over on Saturday evening, at daybreak on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And look, there was a great earthquake and an angel descended from heaven and came down and rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. So for fear of the angels, the guards who were, who were keeping watch there quaked and became like dead men. But the angel spoke up and said to the women, Don't be afraid, for I know it's Jesus, the crucified one, that you are seeking. He was raised. He's not here. Come see the place where he was lying. And quickly now, go tell his disciples that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. 
Look, I told you what to say. The women quickly left the tomb with, with fear and great joy and ran to report to the disciples. And look, Jesus met them as they were going along. And he says to them, greetings. And they approached him and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. And Jesus says to them, don't be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to depart to Galilee. There they will see me. And that's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the church the gift of the gospel. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
The whole world experiences the threat of illness and death due to COVID-19. Build up all people of all nations to maintain ways of safety and health for the sake of those most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn, cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all people who provide essential services and care in this time of crisis. May all your people be mindful of the ways light shines in darkness and life rises up from death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. Inspire us to live our lives in the resurrection hope and to be an Easter people in a Good Friday world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I have a couple of announcements before we have our benediction and dismissal. I want to thank you for your ongoing support for the ministry of St. Matthew and the whole community. We continue to feed those who are hungry, to reach out to those who need help. We are able to continue to bring messages of hope to one another and others in this community. And your offerings are truly what make it possible. You can offer your gifts by sending a mailing an offering to us, putting it in the offering box at the office building, or you may go online to see how it is that you may give in that way. Watch for more information as we continue to do ministry uh, together through our um, online uh, ministries with our worship services, with uh, Zoom conversations, and look, I look forward to beginning a Bible study with you. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace and hope and life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! <laughs>